This is Thoughts with C, J, and L. A podcast by three Asian American people with thoughts on being Asian American and people. In this episode, we're talking about relationships. Hi, everyone. Today, we'll be talking about relationships platonic relationships, workplace relationships, school relationships, the non-platonic relationships, or lack thereof. (laughs) Okay, but but on that note, (laughs) okay, so two things. Maybe I can, like, connect it to the 2023 episode, but how I said it's our bad bitch era, right? But there's this TikTok that I just sent to my co-host. And it says, it's 2023. You don't need to be actively having sex to be in your slut era. It's more of an attitude, a mindset, an emotion, a state of being by Bryson on TikTok, just to credit him. That's what I mean by bad bitch era, okay? (laughs) Like I tell people that and they're like, sure, (laughs) Elle. They're like, sure, like you're going to have that because like, I'm not one to hook up with multiple people. I just, I wish I could, but I really can't. Everyone told me that I shouldn't do it. And I I thought about it and everyone was like, no, that's going to hurt you. And I was like, okay, fine. But people are like, yeah, okay, sure. You can have that. But that's not what I really mean. I don't mean I'm going to like be doing that. Who's to say what it is, but it's not hooking up a lot of people. It's the vibe. And that's what I'm predicting. I don't know if I was telling you guys this, but I think I have this weird... Okay, we're going to go into non-platonic relationships first, I guess. But, like, I think I had this weird expectation for myself as far as, like, romantic partners. In the sense that I think I was raised to always be like, oh, dating is to marry. And not that, like, you know, my own standards were the thing that was getting in the way. Like, (laughs) there aren't a lot of men all over me, is what I'm trying to say. But (laughs) I think I pushed away potential suitors because I was always like, oh, they're not good enough. But the thing is, my dating mindset was always, oh, they have to be at least 80% of what my expectations are. But the truth of the matter is that doesn't always need to be the standard as far as dating. And so now I think I'm going to lower that maybe to 10%. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding. But like, you know what I mean? Jam and I were talking about like casual dating and what that means. Mm. And you know, maybe, maybe that's a part of the bad bitch era. Maybe not. Is I watched a Anna Akana video that was talking about casual dating. And essentially, like, the point of the video was that even if you want, like, if your long-term goal is to have a serious relationship and a partner, casual dating can still be good because you're not putting, like, all of these expectations on one person. And also, dating different people will help you realize what you want and what you don't want. So that's a concept. Yeah. Something I'm not opposed to this year. I feel like for me, I think I get really annoyed by the fact that I want to have a partner. Why? I think especially now, I feel like I'm kind of in the same boat as you, Loho, where I'm like, wow, I really like myself. And I feel like I'm, I know myself better and I am having a lot more new experiences, living life and having fun. But it's like... If I could just enjoy that and then not want to be in a relationship, I feel like I would have a really good life. But then I don't know why there's always a desire to like find a partner. I'm like, why do I want to find a partner? If I just didn't, then I can just enjoy my life. But then why do I keep thinking about it? Because hormones. I feel like an offshoot of that question is like, why do people want friends? Why do we want connection to begin with, even if we like ourselves? I feel like that's more of a philosophical question that applies to all relationships. Yeah, I was thinking about this last night. My thought process on that right now is that I feel like I want a partner because it adds to my emotional stability. I feel like since graduating college, I've had a lot stronger friendships and relationships with my family. And before that, when I didn't have that, I felt very unstable. I was talking about this with my mom, where I feel like in my teenage years, everything was chaos. I couldn't control anything. Like a big part of my frustrations uh, was that I felt like I didn't have a strong social community. 
where I was always like, oh, I don't know if my friends actually like me. I don't know if they're just like using me. I don't know who I can trust, blah, 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 blah. And then there's like no sense of control. I feel like I'm opening a can of worms because I feel like this also goes into your sense of self-worth. Essentially, as I grew up and had stronger friendships and relationships with my family, I felt more secure with myself and my sense of self-worth. But obviously, it's friends and family can't be there for you all the time. So there's still moments where I feel unstable, like on a day-to-day basis, and I feel like a partner would help with that. Not that I'm using people to do that, but I feel like that's a big part of why I want a partner. I kind of feel that. I think sometimes because there's so much going on in my life and I like tell it to people in like different pieces and like different fragments and I like have different friends for different reasons that sometimes, actually a lot of times I find myself being like, wait, did I tell you about this? Needing to give a lot of context for something before I like get to the actual thing. And then sometimes I find myself telling the same person like the story like four times because I forget that I already told it to them three other times. And so part of it is like, just being able to collect it all in in one person instead of outsourcing it (laughs) yeah i've had that thought i think that's why i like the concept of having a dog or like a pet just that there's always like a constant granted i can't tell a dog you know everything but it would be nice to have a thing that is with you a lot of the time and is kind of like your buddy and i think maybe that's like the social aspect that you're like reaching for that's why you want a significant other Mm mm-hmm which seems kind of selfish when I say it out loud. But then I feel like this goes back to our conversation about friendships. It's like, why are you friends with different people? What Kat said before. But I mean, in friendships, you also give, right? So I'm sure that I fulfill different friendship functions for different people. When I think about my friends, I'm not their only friend either, which makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> I can't handle being like somebody's old. That's the thing is like, I can't even handle being one person's only friend. Like, how am I supposed to? I don't know. As a person who has like a very packed schedule right now, I don't know how you're supposed to prioritize another person. That's the other thing too is I don't know if you guys would consider like moving for another person. So I went to this recruiting event at the beginning of December like for school and the company had sent people to like talk to us and then they had like a Q&A panel and then one of the questions that came up was why did you guys choose to like work at the office? Because the company had a bunch of offices. And these were like recent grads, right? They were like recruiting grad students. And they were literally all like, oh, my partner works for what made sense. Or like, oh, my husband works for like their job is here, blah, 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 blah. And so, yeah, I don't know. I was like, whoa, that's so crazy that I think four out of the five of them were like, oh, it's just because my partner had a parallel job. And so it made sense for me to pick the office as my number one location. I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> I can't relate. <laughs> Cat values her independence. Well, that's what I mean by like, also now this being our collective bad bitch era. We are really not tied down to anything if you think about it. It's whatever we deem to be important for us. Thinking about it, I don't know if having a significant other would have deterred my decision to like choose the undergrad and grad school that I did. And also the professional grad school that I'm in now. And it's kind of nice to be like, I decided to move here and then I did. And it was so great because I was able to have like all these experiences that I wanted to. But again, I haven't met anyone that I would have been like, I will move here for you. So I don't know what that feeling is like. Is better or worse than independence and or loneliness. Have you taken the attachment style quiz? No. There's four types. So there's secure, anxious, avoidant, and then anxious avoidant. I mean, there's like a book about it, but essentially it describes how you interact with another person, specifically romantic relationships. And it's kind of based off your, I don't want to say tendencies, but like maybe your experiences from when you're a kid and then like how that translates into your relationships when you're older. So I was just curious as to if you knew what your attachment styles were. No. Is it a quiz we can take like right now? Yeah. I'm doing it right now. Okay. <laughs> some of your uh, responses is making me think you're some type of wood. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me find it. Because there's like I different mean, ones out there. 
like I know what the different styles are, but I don't think I actually ever took an official quiz. Okay, wait, let me let me find it. There's a lot of different ones now. The other thing I think about too, that's kind of like the opposite, or I don't know if it's the opposite, but it's just like another scenario of people I've known who they've been in relationships with the same person for like forever, but it's just always been long distance because they literally both have their own thing going on. And so the hope is that eventually their career paths, life paths will merge and they'll be in the same place. But like in the meantime, they're just forever long distance, which to me is also like, that's wild. Because that also is like a whole different type of commitment too. Yeah. And then going off of that, it's wild that in a long-term relationship, we're always going to change as people. And with that, our compatibilities might change. It's like, where's the line between like compromising for the relationship or admitting that you're no longer compatible, you know, growing up together. My independence is more important to me than my relationships. I think it depends, but I'll put what I think. (laughs) Sometimes people see me as boring because I create a little drama in relationships. That's me. That's me. (laughs) (laughs) That's who I think I am. But then sometimes I'm like, I look at my life and I'm like, maybe I'm not that. (laughs) It's gray rocking. We talked about gray rocking. Oh my gosh. Wait, have we talked about gray rocking on the podcast? I think we have. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to think of an episode we could have talked about gray rocking, but... I don't remember if it was over text or if we actually talked about it. You know, we maybe didn't. Apparently, I'm anxious. Wait, what are the options? I need to to finish this. I will not lie. I put neither disagree nor agree for a lot of them. Oh, I'm trying to avoid neither agree or disagree, but I think I might have to put it for some of them. I think, like always, though, there's always a balance. (laughs) But yeah. that's the top out answer. It is, but it's true. Like <laughs> you need to be able to grow on your own, but also like it is good to grow with other people. You know, like it's fine to be single forever. You don't need a partner. But I think it's still important to like make human connection and like share experiences with other people. Yeah. Okay, mine says secure. Of oh, course. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what are the other options? So there's secure, anxious, avoidant, and then anxious, avoidant. Oh, interesting. Oh, just to credit the book. Did you read the book? I did read the book. It's by Dr. Amir Levine and Rachel Heller. And the book is called Attached. Oh. I was expecting avoidant for you, Kat. <laughs> the avoidance are like... They value independence a lot, and they're scared of their independence being threatened by a relationship. Mm. I'm also anxious, but I also haven't taken this quiz in a while, so maybe I'm secure. Wait, why am I anxious? Now I'm anxious. (laughs) Anxious attachment styles are like, you're scared that people are going to abandon you, and... Okay. According to the website, you love to be very close to your romantic partners and have the capacity for great intimacy. You often fear, however, that your partner does not wish to be as close as you would like him or her or they to be. Relationships tend to consume a large part of your emotional energy. You tend to be very sensitive to small fluctuations in your partner's moods and actions. And although your senses are often accurate, you take your partner's behaviors overly personally. You experience a lot of negative emotions within the relationship and get easily upset. As a result, you tend to act out and say things you later regret. If the other person provides a lot of security and reassurance, you are able to shed much of your preoccupation and feel content. And then for avoidant, it is very important for you to maintain your independence and self-sufficiency, and you often prefer autonomy to intimate relationships. Even though you do want to be close to others, you feel uncomfortable with too much closeness and tend to keep your partner at arm's length. You don't spend much time worrying about your romantic relationships or about being rejected. You tend not to open up to your partners and they often complain that you're emotionally distant. In relationships, you're often on high alert for any signs of control or impingement on your territory by your partner. Okay, I feel like I probably am upfront that avoidant type. 
but I was thinking like in my head when taking the quiz I was like thinking about people that I'm already like like there's like a threshold you know once you cross the threshold I'm like okay this person isn't a threat to my sense of stability if anything they like contribute and then once you reach that threshold it's like okay well then there's like mutual trust if we have an argument I know that like I just get where they're coming from I think when I meet people in general in the world I'm always on high alert because you like you just never know like strangers are strangers but like with people who are like definitely in my life I'm like well I've vetted them like I'm I guess I'm confident about my own maybe too confident about my own ability to like vet people who give bad vibes <laughs> my assumption is that if I were in a relationship with somebody this wouldn't be an issue because they'd be a good person or they'd be all Whoa. right <laughs> <laughs> everyone who is not friends with cat no no not good I shouldn't have said good <laughs> but I just meant like no, because remember when Kat was like, I asked people certain questions to see if they'll pass my test. And I was like, oh my gosh, this, this entire friendship has been a test. <laughs> no, I we but like. <laughs> when you thought we were friends. Is that what you mean when they, when you say they pass the threshold by passing the test? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I think my assumption is just that if we weren't gonna vibe I wouldn't be in a relationship with them and I wouldn't be bummed about it I would not be in that place in the first place okay I have a take that I was trying to explain yesterday but I don't think I have fully formulated theory sentences that will translate well to public but hear me out okay so someone was like what is your type and I don't think I have an appearance type more than like a personality vibe type and then I was trying to explain, like, the vibe that I'm going for will probably manifest itself into how they dress, how they put themselves together when they, like, go out. Like, someone that I would find attractive probably has, like, a certain type of haircut and dress style that would make me attracted to them more so than, like, how they physically look with just their face or their body. Odds are whatever they are doing will impact how they look. And so I'll already be attracted to that in addition to their personality mm -hmm. I feel like I get what you're saying when I was younger I think I would focus mostly on appearance and be like wow I find that person attractive and therefore that person is my crush but then mm -hmm. now I feel like my standards for crushes have elevated where it's not just about appearance it's like yeah what you said how they carry themselves what their personality is it's like they could have a cool personality but if I can't vibe with them, then it's not going to work, you know? Yeah. Like, no matter how, I guess, conventionally attractive they are. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then that's how our standards go up, and then they just get higher and higher, and then we'll never <laughs> find people who are good enough. See, and that's what I mean. No one will ever be good enough. <laughs> but um, how are the relationships that you've made in grad school, tying it back to our theme of everything everywhere all at once? <laughs> <laughs> um fine <laughs> they're good i like my friends they're great new and old <laughs> especially i feel like my friendships in grad school have been good it's also interesting well mm. i have a stream of thought that is drawing from several conversations actually so one thing that has really become a source of stress in my life or not stress not real stress at least just like side stress is just the concept of friend groups <laughs> and we've talked about this but i had another realization about friend groups besides the one that we talked about previously what was the one that we talked about previously? okay i'm okay <laughs> all right Okay, the, the original friend group realization I had was that earlier in the summer, I feel like there was a mad scramble in my program because we're all starting. We're all in a new place. My cohort is big. Everybody's trying to be friends. I feel like there was a mad scramble to like get friend groups. People really wanted like to make a group chat with several people in our program and just like have a friend group, like a go to friend group. And so my first realization when it came to friends and friend groups was that for whatever reason, back in the day when we were all kids, right, everybody wanted like a best friend, right? That was the goal. You wanted a best friend to do everything with. But then now, even outside of my program, just like what I see in young adults in general is just this desire for a friend group. 
as opposed to a best friend like people really want a group or a squad or whatever to just hang out with and i saw this on tiktok around thanksgiving too like people were talking about like friendsgiving and how like who's invited to who's friendsgiving and it was a whole thing that people were speculating and like talking about on tiktok but yeah, so like first the concept of a best friend versus a best friend group. And then the other thing that is stressful about friend groups to me is I think a lot of times the friend groups tend to get bigger, right? Seven, eight, nine, ten people or whatever. Like it's just like it gets to be a large number of people all of a sudden. And I think I feel really out of control in like those types of environments because I am not like when you get to at least for me right when I get to like a group of like six seven eight nine ten people I know that I'm not individually friends with every single person in that group and so like if there's like weird shit going on if there's drama or whatever like there's a good chance that you're just not going to have like rapport with every single person in that group and like if you're trying to organize stuff if you're trying to hang out or whatever like it just everything is like four times more complicated than it needs to be because you're not all friends with each other you're like friends with this group so that was like another realization for me like i'm like okay that's why all my friend groups are like small because i feel like i need to be friends with every person before i'm friends with the group and that's it that was my realization <laughs> those are <were> my two <laughs> wait maybe that's why three person friend groups are elite yeah do we talk about how like three person friend groups are really good I think we talked about it over text, but not podcast. I mean, there's not much to say other than three is the best number. <laughs> I would say three to like four, maybe even five, but three, yeah. three and four are kind of prime. That's like the max for me. Even five. I've been part of five, but they just, they're not strong. They're not robust. You just fall apart. I don't know. <laughs> Some weird stuff happens and then it's like, okay, I don't know. The vibe is weird in this group chat now. You know how like in chemistry the shorter bonds are tighter even in geometry they're just stronger because mm. there's more space for each individual person to be accounted for mm -hmm. yeah wait because in the three-person group you can only have one conversation going but then oh. like from four and up from four you can have two conversations going because yeah you can have two and two and then from there on up you can have a lot more different conversations going on you're a genius. Wait, you're a genius. <laughs> no, yeah, that's, that's definitely it. Because like, yeah. Yeah, that's it. You cracked the code, bestie. Well <laughs> <laughs> the president. <laughs> like, if Jam and I talk about Frisbee, Kat has no one to turn to. <laughs> No, actually, the wait, wait, wait. It's like Lohova and I talk, would talk about frisbee, and then like Cat would sit there and listen, and then like Cat and Loho would talk about. I remember last year, or maybe last last year, like you two would be talking about grad school in the future, and I would be sitting here because I have no thoughts on that. And then like Cat and I would talk about like Ann Arbor drama, <laughs> and then Loho would be like, "Oh, interesting." Yeah, you're a genius. Wow, that's your definitely your TLDR. My God. <laughs> Three is elite. Yeah, three is elite. And then two, not that there's like pressure to, but if there's four, there's like less responsibility for the conversation or the group to be together. Wait, yeah, I just played Frisbee and then went to lunch with some of them and there were like four of us. And because I mean, I didn't know any of them very well, but I mean, it was just like small talk here and there. But because there are four people, I was like, well, I don't have to put too much effort into keeping my conversation <laughs> going, right? But then I feel like everyone else felt the same way, especially because we just played Frisbee. And so, like, the conversation was just, like, very slow, which is fine. But, like, I feel like the bigger the group, the less pressure you feel to add to the conversation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. We're in the presence of a... A little genius. <laughs> Next Albert Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's in like in, in a book somewhere. Okay, before we were talking about standards and we've been saying like, oh, we have high standards and we can't, we won't be able to find anyone who's like good enough. But then I feel like at the same time, I have no standards. No, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I have no standards. They, the only standard is that they have to vibe. Which, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Standard. It's like, no, not but it's everyone like when, vibes. You, when you meet someone, you're not like, okay, what does this person have? It's like, you meet someone, you're like, okay, who is this person? Let me get to know this person first and then be like, okay, we can be friends or more than that or whatever. That's why it takes time. I feel like that was my approach with friends too, though, because 
when I was going from high school to college, I was definitely one of those people who wanted to find a best friend. But then I had all of these expectations of what a best friend looked like, that if someone didn't fit my criteria of best friend, I'm like, we're probably never going to be good friends. And I didn't put a lot of effort into building <laughs> a relationship. But then that means I must, missed out on a lot of opportunities to make friends, right? But I feel like since moving to Chicago, I've been more open-minded and be like, oh, hello, you're a person. Let me get to know you. Mm-hmm. I think I was telling someone though, I don't know if you guys feel this way, but in terms of just friendships or people in general, I think people, not to like brag, are very comfortable with me and like think that we are closer than I think that we are. Mm. <laughs> because like someone described me once as an agreeable person. I don't know if that's the right word I would use. Makes me sound like a pushover a little bit. But like a lot of people like are willing to talk to me because they feel comfortable around me. And like I'm very happy sharing random things or hearing other people's things but um like I think I'm pretty particular in terms of like who I think I actually click with that's definitely relatable I feel like especially for good listeners because Mm. everyone likes to talk about themselves and if they can find someone who is actually interested in what they have to say then it's GG (laughs) gamer speak and then that, like, that's the problem, right? Because it's like sometimes there's people who, I mean, they're very nice, but then they just keep talking about themselves. <laughs> we can have a good conversation, but also I'm not your therapist. The other thing that is really, really tricky about all of this is I feel like a lot of people are so normal. There's like the nice dimension of this, but then there's also like the normal dimension of this. I feel like I'm definitely not like a normal person. On the internet, we would say like a normie. (laughs) On the internet, for people who don't use the internet. You know, okay, it's hard to find people who you can like relate to in terms of like interests or like things that you engage in because not everybody does that but I mean that is important because I was I have like a high school group that I see every holiday-ish and um we're like we don't know why we feel so close together even though we hardly ever talk like when we're not together or like when we reconnect with someone who was from our high school it's like very easy and it's because I think we had that shared either upbringing or like background with each other because you can't make jokes if like people don't have the content I feel like maybe like 80 percent of my conversations with friends who I've met in high school or before are all about past memories well it's like we can update each other on what we're currently doing but at some point the conversation always turns to oh my gosh do you remember that one time blah 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 Yeah, like, as much as I don't want to talk about school with my friends, we eventually just talk about school at least for, like, 10 minutes. Yeah. It's not longer, but, yeah. Yeah, because it's your shared context. Yeah. But then how do you find someone who you can talk about everything with? That's why you got to, like, introduce them to your lore, so then they have a backstory. (laughs) Why do you say it like that, (laughs) Lo? What do you mean? Uh, the lore. (laughs) Oh, Lord. Spoken like a true internet person. Oh my gosh, I'm not a normie. <laughs> you are. I maintain that none of my friends are normies, even if they think they are, because there's just no way. <laughs> there's no <laughs> way we could be friends if you were a normie. <laughs> Should we call it? This is a good place to end. TLDRs. The vibes. TLDR, the vibes. TLDR, three is elite. TLDR, no one has standards. Wait, what? <laughs> wait, that's not. <laughs> no, 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 wait. No one doesn't not have standards. <laughs> I'll explain it on the next episode. No, no, it's TLDR. Your standards are your own. And that's all I have to say. No one has higher low standards. TLDR, no one has higher low standards. Everyone just has <laughs> their personalized standards. Okay, I, I can, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. (laughs) Bye, Jane. Bye, Jane. Bye, Jane.